Greetings. I am the Trope Master, Master of Tropes, here to teach you a lesson from my Bible. Listen well, for it is here that you will witness the glories of tropes made into masterful stories, and the horrors unleashed by fools who use them poorly. Cause of and solution to all of life's problems. You're unsure of how to rescue Sirius Black? Time travel. You need information from a dead man? Time travel. Need to stop someone? Time travel. Yes, this is a contentious trope, not to be trifled with. All too often, someone thinks, hey, you know what this movie needs? Time travel! And then the movie is condemned to the very bottom of troping hell. It is a mark of shame, a horror to be buried and never uncovered. Even so, it is possible to make something good with time travel. Let us go over some kinds of time travel. The first is perhaps the least problematic. Time travel to the future. Such is found in movies like The Time Machine from 1960. And it does not deal with the mechanics of time travel. Rather, they deal with the exploration of the future. Strange and alien outcomes, all without leaving planet Earth. More often than not, they'll include a lesson about the present day. When the time machine was made, it was the time of the Cold War, and so nuclear destruction was the bridge between the present and the future. Here, nearing the 2020s, the lesson is often about climate change, as with Tomorrowland. When done well, this type of time travel is used to create fantastical scenarios. Though, like any other movie set in the future, it can also be... heavy-handed. Do note that character growth is easy in this environment, since it gives characters a new perspective to learn from. The second type of time travel is rare, such that I only have Harry Potter as a major example. This is the closed loop. It is time travel to the past in which all the effects can be found in the present. Harry Potter saves himself from Dementors. The events are woven into time tightly. If an event never changed in present knowledge, then you can't go back and change it, because you never went back and changed it. Which is why it never changed in present knowledge. <sighs> time logic. Gotta love it. As complex as it sounds, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is a good example of how it works. If you do not understand it, you can watch that movie. It's easier to visualize than explain. While it works as far as time travel goes it's a time travel of plot convenience it's hard to do wrong but there is not really a right way to do it either the third kind is all too common this is the type where the future is malleable either it throws you into another timeline or time itself can be moved around easily there's dozens of explanations for this the consequences in time traveling this way are abundant but so are the rewards. There are many bad examples of this, but there is a good one that stands out. Back to the Future. It is a story where a teen goes back in time and accidentally prevents his parents from meeting. In order to prevent himself from never being born, he has to play matchmaker between his mom and dad. This stands as a good example not only because of its excellent characters, but also because despite how much it plays with time travel, its logic is consistent. Marty McFly keeps his memories of the first timeline in which his dad was a pathetic nobody, no matter how time changes. This is always consistent. Changes made to the past cause events, people and places to fade away in the future. This is always consistent. Things and people brought back in time continue to exist no matter how much the past changes. This is always consistent. And this is where time travel often falls apart in stories. Either writers are unaware or producers overrule them, but someone thinks it's okay to insert time travel where it doesn't belong, and it always turns into an illogical, inconsistent mess. Take Looper, the story where assassins kill people who are sent back in time. The Rainmaker is the one who kills Joe's wife in the future, so he goes back and tries to kill the Rainmaker as a child, but his past self thinks that in doing so, he'll create the Rainmaker, even though future Joe never went through this the first time around. No! 
If Joe didn't come back in the first timeline, then if this was the only way the Rainmaker existed, the Rainmaker wouldn't have existed in the first timeline, and so all of this story would not have happened. It's not how it works. <sighs> I apologize. Perhaps that was hard to follow. Time logic often is. But to generalize, the problem with time travel is twofold. One, it doesn't fit whatever story it is in. The wrong kind is used for the genre and so makes things overly complicated. Or, two, the way time travel works is so inconsistent that the audience is left thinking about it too much and it distracts them from everything else. Looper has both of these. It's not terrible for a movie, but time travel is poorly used. It appears to be a combination thriller and family drama. An assassin is hunting down a mother and son, but his past self is befriending them. Time travel fits one, but the other? It's merely a complication. And not just any complication, the inconsistencies stand out. What should have been a meaningful sacrifice is instead a confusing mess and a confusing end. When making a story with time travel, ask yourself, is the way I'm using time travel meaningful for my story? Or is it just a gimmick? If it's just a gimmick, discard it. If it's meaningful, though, ask yourself, what are time travel's rules in my story? If you don't establish good time logic and clear rules, your audience is going to think much too hard about it. They will complain if it makes no sense or is too hard to understand. So if you absolutely must use time travel, be careful. It's guaranteed that if you're not, people will notice and troping hell will await you. Thus endeth the lesson. It is my solemn duty to tell you that I will not be giving further lessons for the foreseeable future. I will be starting a grand hero's journey into tropes, attaining further mastery and lessons to be written within my Bible. You need not fear for me, students. Nay, future masters, for I am the trope master, master of tropes, and some day I shall return to show you even greater glories of tropes. Farewell.